I loved him so much that I didn't want to quit. I gave up my life to care for him. Today we're talking about caregiver's grief. And I want to share a story with you of one of our viewers who wrote to me and allowed me to share some of his email. And he cared for a highly autistic, nonverbal man. And he cared for him for 13 years. And he says, I provided with him all of his care 24-7. I showered him, dressed him, took him to all his doctor's appointments, gave him his meds, assisting him with walking, made sure that he drank enough to stay hydrated. I fixed him his meals. I spoon-fed him. I did everything for him. I even helped him when he got worked up, when he got agitated, and he was, he was the calming presence. And he took care of him 24-7, but he did have a respite during the day where for five hours a day, the person he was caring for would go to a program. And so that was the time when he had his rest, and that was his only time off. But then COVID hit. And I know COVID has affected so many of you, which is also why I think this is so relevant. And he says, when COVID hit, his day program closed and I took care of him without a single minute off for 16 months straight. He was also pointed out that he was directed to keep him isolated. So that it was really just the two of them very closely um, because of COVID, it made it safer for him. And he shared with me that he says, I developed caregivers burnout that presented with depression and severe anxiety. I stopped eating, showering myself, and could only get about four hours of sleep a night because he would wake me up when he had to go to the bathroom and I would need to help him walk so that he wouldn't fall. But he said, I loved him so much that I didn't want to quit. I had given up my life to care for him. So this was, it was physically hurting him. It was mentally and emotionally hurting him, but he kept on going. And that's something that we see with a lot of caregivers because you feel so responsible for the people that you're caring for. And he says, he finally got what was going to be about a month of respite care. And this was because he had no other choice. And he said when he woke up the next morning, when he wasn't caring for the person that he had cared for for 13 years, he said, I didn't even know what to do with myself. My entire life structure was built around caring for him, his med schedule, when he needed to eat and drink. And it was as if my entire world fell apart. He ultimately had to tell the family that he couldn't work for them anymore. It was, it was just too much. And he said he cried when he told him because he felt solely responsible for this person's care. They were his family. And they had spent every holiday together since he had started caring for him. This is 13 years. And so his grieving started when he stopped caring for him. And he said, three months later, I got a call from his brother that he was ill and in the hospital and was deteriorating quickly. He was able to see him um, in the hospital room. And he said, I walked into the hospital room and he was slumped over with his head resting on a hard plastic railing. And I said to him, I'm here, little buddy, like I had always done before and helped prop him up. And he perked up after I got there and he tried to lean forward and say, happy today. And again, he was nonverbal autistic, so that was a big deal. And it wasn't long after when he breathed his last breath and he went still. And his caregiver was able to be there with him, which was a blessing. But then his, grief on, his own grief started. And he said, I barely functioned for days, crying most of the time I was awake. I was just as dependent on him as he was on me. I had no idea what to do with my life without him. 
And as the days had gone by, the sadness was only relieved by numbness and guilt. Guilt that if I had not quit, he would still be alive. Guilt for not being able to care for him any longer because I burned out and wasn't even able to care for myself. Guilt that I couldn't keep going. I felt so guilty like I had abandoned him and he is gone because no one else understood him like I did and no one else could provide the care for him like I could. Hard. And later in the email, he was reflecting on his loss and he says, I lost so much. He says, I lost my friend, my job, my stability, my life structure. And he described that he lost his sense of identity, his sense of security. And I was so touched by this because caregivers give so much, right? And just being a caregiver makes you so selfless and in my opinion, so amazing as a person. But yet, when I talk to people who have been caregivers, there's always so much guilt. And this is what I told him, you know, I said, I know this is a natural reaction to feel guilty, but to be honest, I hate that you feel guilty. It makes me sad and angry for you. And if you're a caregiver, what you do and what you have chosen, um, whether you feel like you chose it or you didn't have a choice, not everybody could make that choice. Not everybody could choose to care. And caregivers, you are amazing and caring and empathetic. And you live life selflessly for someone else. And yet you beat yourself up and you carry this guilt and sadness after they're gone. And it hurts my heart. It really, really does. And so I'm making this video because I want you all to know that you are not alone. And I want to encourage you guys to, you know, to comment and say, hey, I'm a caregiver too. I get it. Let this viewer know that he's not alone. And I'm hoping that this video will remind you that you are not alone. And so I just want to say like, thank you for the gift. If you've been a caregiver, it is such a gift. And I am sure that there are people who want to say thank you for your kindness and your selflessness. And if you haven't heard that enough, I want to reiterate it again. Thank you for your kindness and your selflessness. And so if you're the one who's grieving now because you are a caregiver and you are deep in grief, I want you to know first and foremost that you're not alone. Um, I talk to a lot of people who have been through the situations may be slightly different, right? The length of time and the background situation and how COVID has affected it but it's not an easy situation and it's a hard position for you to be in. And so I want to encourage you to know that, that your way of being is to take care of other people. That's who you are. That's who your sense of identity has become. But there are times when you need to, to say, I need some care now too. And you need to be able to take care of yourself. And so if you are grieving, learn as much as you can about yourself now. And, and if you've lost your sense of self, lost your identity, like my, like my other viewer did, I want to encourage you to focus on what's still inside you. What made you want to choose to be a caregiver? Because whether you feel like you had a choice or not, you did choose. And it was a brave and courageous choice. And to take time for you 
And if you're starting fresh because your life as you knew it is now nothing like it was, take time to create a new a new life for yourself. And yeah, it's starting from scratch, but it's one day at a time. And lean into anything, even the smallest things that that bring you a little bit joy, bring you comfort, decide what you want, decide what you need. You know, my, my grief journal that I've been promoting lately, there's a section in it that says at the bottom, it says, what do I need today? And as a caregiver, ask yourself that, what do I need today? What do I need right now? What do I need in this moment? You can create a new, amazing life for yourself that looks different, but that doesn't necessarily have to be bad. So I want you to create that life and be inspired by the people that you worked with and the people that you've lost and the people that you've loved and the people who have helped create who you are and have given you the experiences that you've had and know that you are enriched by these experiences and that you can find joy again, and that it's okay to be happy. And there are a lot of guilt videos on here because I talk about guilt a lot. Give yourself some grace, find forgiveness, watch those videos over and over again if you need to, but you deserve to be happy. And God bless you for taking care of someone else so selflessly. Take care of you and ask yourself, what do I need today? And as always, if I can support you, if I can help you, reach out. Email me at griefinspired at gmail.com. Let me know what you need. And if you don't know what you need, say, I don't know what I need, but I need some help. And I will be there. So take care of you today. And I hope this video helped you. And we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.